<laughs> you gotta count me down. Oh my god. Come on, do it. Do you feel a little right now? Hello. I mean, I'd like to believe I'm not. Are you gonna count I me just, down or not? I've just never seen any proof. Not? So I, <laughs> just I say just it. Three, two, one. Anymore. How's it going, guys? Today we're gonna to be going over a question called "Fruit into Baskets." And before we start our question today, I just want to say thank you to everyone who's reached out since the last video. Last video, I really try and encourage people to reach out to me if they need any help or there's any way I can help them for their interviews, and a lot of people have reached out since then. So this is just a quick reminder that if you guys need any help or there's anything I could do to help you, leave a comment down below and we can try and sort something out. Cool. So the reason why I want to do this question today actually is this is the most commonly asked question by Google right now. So this is a very, very important question to know. I've had a couple people reach out to me recently about their Google interviews, and so I figured, you know, this is probably a good question to do for them. This is a good question for anyone else who hasn't reached out who's, you know, going to be interviewing with Google. Um, so very, very important question to know. This is the most asked question at Google right now. So the problem description says, in a row of trees, the ith tree produces fruit with type I, or tree of I. You start any tree of your choice, then repeatedly perform the following steps. Add one piece of fruit from this tree to your baskets. If you cannot stop, um, number two is move to the next tree to your right of the current tree. If there is no tree to the right, stop. Note that you not have any choice after the initial choice of starting tree. You must perform step one, then step two, then back to step one, then, st then step two, and then continue all well, um, until you have to stop. You have two baskets and each basket can carry any quantity of fruit, but you want each basket to only carry one type of each fruit. What is the total amount of fruit you can collect with this procedure? So this is incredibly uh, confusing, <laughs> the way that they've explained this. So what we're really doing is, you can think about this like we're walking down a row of trees. We have two baskets and the baskets can only hold one type of fruit each. And we want to know what are the, what's the maximum um, amount of fruit that we can collect using these two procedures that they tell us, right? So if we start, stop at, I don't know, like an apple tree, right? And we pick an apple and then we move to the next tree and we grab like a pear or something. Then we have apples and pears. So if we get to the third tree and it's a peach tree. Sorry, we can't actually take a peach. Um, so what they're really asking is from any starting place, like what's the maximum amount of fruit that we can collect where we can only have two different types. So example one here, now that we kind of have like an analogy, right? These different types of apple trees are um, peach, peach pears and that sort of thing. We can kind of walk through a real example now, now that hopefully it makes sense. So we have one, two, and one, where these are three different types of fruit, or sorry, two different types of fruit, one and two. We would output three, right? Because we can collect one from the first tree, two from the second tree, sorry, one from the first tree, one from the second tree and one from the third tree. And that's okay because there are only two types and the two types are type one and type number two. So we can collect all three of these and therefore we would return three. Um, I'm not gonna keep walking through these examples. If you guys need to pause the video and you guys can try and walk through it on your own, but hopefully that makes sense. So we're just trying to find um, the maximum amount of fruit that we can collect while only collecting two types of fruit and it has to be contiguous. So I've talked a lot in the past about how certain problems are masked as other problems. And so what this problem really boils down to is the longest substring with at most two characters. And two is just because they tell us we can carry um, two different types of fruit, right? Because we're only given these two baskets. But typically this question could be asked like the longest um, substring of a string with K characters. Um, so in this case, we're just dealing with two. So what we're really trying to do and what this problem is actually masked as is just the longest substring with at most two characters. So what I propose we do is we lock, walk around along this row of trees and we have two pointers. So we have I start at one tree and then we kind of continue while we could actually pick fruit. And eventually we'll get to a point where we've reached um, three types of trees. And at that point, we need to know how many fruits we've collected. So we calculate that. Then what we want to do is we basically want to, let's say the first half was tree type one and the second half was tree type two. We want to continue wherever J left off, discarding the first fruit. So we would start counting from here. So essentially we're moving along this, uh, this row of trees, calculating how many things we can pick given the current starting position. 
then we find a part, uh, you know, a point where we can, we, where we have too many types of fruit. So we discard the first part or the first fruit that we collected. So now we're here and then we continue again and we, I'll just shift down, but we continue again. And now we get to a point where again, we have three types. We had to discard the first tree uh, type that we consider the first root type and continue again. So if we can do that correctly, we can probably keep like a maximum variable and constantly whenever we hit this threshold of like, oh, now we are considering three different types of um, fruit, let's recalculate our maximum, see if it's bigger, and if it is, we'll store it. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's start walking through the code and we can go through it again once we're done. So I always like to do error checking. I think this is something that you guys should do in your interviews. So the first thing I do is error checking. So if the tree is null or tree.length is zero, we're just gonna return zero in this case, just because, right, there's no actual fruit that we can collect, therefore the maximum is zero. It's also probably a good point to mention that you always wanna clarify um, with your interviewer if you're actually gonna receive a valid input, and if you're not, and you have a check like this, you wanna ask, okay, you know, what should I return in the event that I get some sort of weird input? And they, you know, maybe they'll tell you zero, which is kinda of like what I'm just arbitrarily choosing here, because I think that makes sense but they might tell you to return a negative number or, or anything of that nature, depending on the problem. So if we don't have a tree, we can't collect any fruit, so we return zero. Otherwise we have a tree, so we can definitely start at one. So we'll say our max to begin is one. And now what I think we could do is to keep track of those indices and things, we're gonna use a hash map. So I'll make a hash map, hash map integer to integer, and we'll call it map equals new hash map integer to integer. Okay. And so now this is going to map the type of fruit to wherever it's occurred in the array. And we're going to constantly overwrite it so that when we do find three different fruit, we know the leftmost one of the, or if we're walking through it, let's go left to right. So the, the rightmost, um, the occurrence of the last type of first fruit that we saw. Hopefully that makes sense. So we're going to remember the index that the first fruit has occurred at, essentially. And we'll constantly overwrite it while we see new ones. So now we need our pointers, right? So we'll have two pointers, i and j, and they'll both start at zero because we're going to start at the first tree, right? And now we'll say, wow, j is less than tree.length. So while we still have fruit to process, right, we haven't gone through all of them, j is going to be the pointer that goes further ahead. So that's like as far as we can go. So we only need J to be less than tree.length. Now we need to see, okay, let's try and take the current fruit that we're on, whatever it is. So if our map.size is less than two, right? Cause we're only allowed, actually let's do less than or equal to. So if our map size is less than or equal to two, we're gonna try and take the current fruit. And so we're gonna do that by saying map.put tree of J with J plus plus. And so this is going to, again, either put the first occurrence of that fruit in our hash map, or it's gonna override it with um, whatever index we're on, right? So if we've already seen this, or we're seeing this fruit again, this type of fruit, we're just gonna update the last index that we've seen it at. And so now we're gonna check if our maps size is strictly greater than three, then we know we need to recalculate our maximum, right? So now we're at the case where bam, we've now hit a third type of fruit and we want to consider, okay, are, are these things, this number of fruit, is this bigger than the maximum we've seen? So we'll do that. But for now, let's figure out how we're going to update our J, right? Because if these are, this is the first type of fruit and this is the second type of fruit, we need to move um, away from the first type of fruit that we considered. So we can consider the second type of fruit and the third that we're now seeing. So the way we want to do that is we want to basically move our i up to whatever the uh, rightmost occurrence of that first fruit is. So we're going to have a minimum because we want to find the smallest occurrence, right? The leftmost. And we'll set that equal to oops, tree dot length minus one to start because we know that that's like the biggest value at first. So anything we see that's smaller than it, it should update accordingly. So we'll now we'll go through everything in the hash map and basically find the minimum index. So we'll say for int value in map.values and we'll just update min with math, math.min. So min equals math.min, whoops, math.min of min and we want value. 
So now that's going to find the minimum uh, index for us. So now all we have to do is set i equal to the min plus one so that we actually move, right? That's the occurrence of the last, uh, for the last occurrence of the fir first fruit we're considering. So we don't want to consider it again. So we move to the right one. So we'll add one to it. And now what we want to do, um, once we found that minimum, we want to, sorry, let me think for a second. Okay, we just updated the minimum. And now, right, now we want to remove it from our hash map. So we want to say map.remove, right? So we're not, we don't keep considering it. We want to remove whatever is at tree of min. And actually, I think we want to, actually, yeah, that should be fine. Okay, so now we're removing from the map uh, whatever type of fruit this was, right? So whatever type is at that minimum value, we want to no longer consider it uh, when we're picking our fruit. So we'll remove it from our map so we don't mess up every you know, subsequent iteration. And so now outside here, we always just want to constantly be updating our maximum, right? So if we found a new max, let's update it. So we can make max equal to math.max of whatever our maximum currently is, and then j minus i, right? Because j minus i is gonna be however far we've actually traveled um, picking these fruit. And so once this loop ends, we should be able to just return our max. And let's see if this works. We get a time limit exceeded. Let's think about why. Oh, whoops, because I put greater than three, I think. So what we actually want is greater than two, right? So if we have strictly more than two things in our map, that's when we need to recalculate our maximum. Awesome, and it works. So sorry that I fumbled through that a little bit, but again, it is kind of a complicated problem. If this wasn't clear for any reason or you have any questions, be sure to leave it in the comments or if you want to connect about anything uh, related to programming. I hope this was helpful, guys. Again, this is the most frequently asked question at Google right now as of November 8th, 2018. So make sure you guys understand this. And again, if you guys have anything you need help with, be sure to let me know and I'd be happy to help however I can. All right, guys, this has been Fruit Into Baskets in Java. I hope this is helpful and I'll see you guys next time.